and got my gavel so it's official. Good afternoon. I'm going to go ahead and call this session of the City of Cedro Woolley Hearing Examiner to order. For the record, today is October 5th, 2020 at uh, 1 p.m. We have one item on the agenda today. This is numbers ZV 2020-052 and SP 2020-053. And it relates to a request for a short plot to subdivide an approximately 0.62 acre lot into three separate residential lots and a zoning variance to reduce the lot width for two front lots and reduce the minimum lot size for one of the front lots to allow for a shared access easement for property located at 523 Ball Street. My name is Andrew Reeves. I'm a hearing examiner with Sound Law Center, who the city has selected to hold certain land use application hearings like this one, and today it will be my role to collect evidence in the form of exhibits and testimony to determine whether this com proposal complies with the city's comprehensive plan, zoning ordinances, critical areas ordinances, and the specific criteria for approval of a short plat under section 1612.045A of the municipal code, as well as the uh, criteria for approval of a variance uh, which is under chapter 1760 of the municipal code. Uh, so to that end, I received exhibits in advance of the hearing today that I had an opportunity to review. These have been labeled exhibits A through M. They include a staff report, the application materials themselves, uh, information on the notice that went out in relation to this hearing, and then several public comments that were received. Uh, some in support, some that express concerns, but I have had an opportunity to review all of these exhibits and I'm deeming them admitted into the record. Should anyone have additional exhibits they'd like admitted into the record, let me know when it's your opportunity to testify and I'll go ahead and address admitting additional exhibits at that time. Speaking of testimony, all testimony today will be under oath or affirmation uh, as everyone's aware, we're in a strange moment in history, so we are holding this hearing using remote meeting technology, which makes things a little bit odd, but in terms of getting everyone under oath, uh, rather than uh, do this multiple times, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of it right now. So though I can't see everyone, anyone that thinks that they might be talking and, and uh, providing testimony today, if I could have you raise your hand for me, I'm gonna go ahead and swear everyone in. So do you all swear or affirm to tell the truth in any testimony you give here today? I do. I do. Great, thank you. So I'm gonna treat everyone as sworn in and I note that uh, we are recording this uh, in case there were an appeal. The uh, recording of today's hearing as well as the admitted exhibits would serve as the foundation for any such appeal. Uh, finally, the order that we typically follow is first we'll hear from city staff who will give an overview of the proposal along with any recommendations that staff may have. Next, we'll turn it to our applicant or applicant representative to present any additional information they feel that myself and members of the public uh, should be aware of. Uh, following that, members of the public will have an opportunity to participate and provide testimony and comments uh, if they so desire. So we will uh, check back in uh, at that point in the hearing to see if we have members of the public interested in testifying. Then at the end, if appropriate, I'll turn it back to our applicants and city staff to respond to any such testimony. I think that's about it. I may and often do ask questions of those that testify. I'm not trying to trip anyone up. I'm just trying to make sure I have a thorough understanding of the proposal so that within 10 business days of the record closing, I'm able to produce a decision that is hopefully clear and legally defensible. So I think with that, we can get started. Uh, first, I believe we're gonna hear from Catherine Ware of city staff, but for purposes of the audio recording, I just ask folks to uh, wait your turn to speak for one and for two, uh, before you speak, when, when I've directed you to, to participate, please restate your name so it's clear uh, on the audio recording. So I think we'll get started. So Catherine Ware, thank you for being here. I will turn it over to you for your overview. Thank you. Um, so as you mentioned earlier, the application, plural application is for a um, short plat and zoning variance um, to allow for the three lot short plat with an easement over one of the first lots. Um, the applicant requested a zoning variance from the lot width and lot size requirements. Um, and 
So they're asking for a reduction in the lot width of lot two and the lot area of lot two, as well as the lot width of lot one. Those are both of the front lots. And the reduction in width on lot one is to accommodate a five foot setback or allow for a five foot setback from the existing home on lot two. Um, city staff reviewed the applications against the criteria for short plots and variances and is recommending approval with conditions. And those conditions being provide a maintenance agreement for the shared driveway that serves lots two and three to be reviewed and approved with final plat and construct parking spaces that meet seizure related development regulations on proposed lots one and two before short final short plat approval. Did that then conclude your remarks, Ms. Ware? Yeah. Okay. Um, so just to be clear, uh, typically. Typically, uh, short plats and variances, and sorry, I'm getting a lot of feedback. If folks can maybe mute themselves and, until I call on you, that would be helpful. Um, but my question for Ms. Ware was, typically short plats and uh, variances are exempt from review under the State Environmental Policy Act. Did staff determine that was the case here? Yes. So it's just, it's a short plat, so it doesn't trigger SEPA and the variance does not trigger SEPA as well, because um, yeah, we've reviewed that again. Okay, so under WAC 197 oh, I think it's 803 and 6 probably, not. Uh, it's 197 11. yeah, that's the SEPA. Okay. Great, and then I, I did receive the public comment letters and I, I admit that I am not great at reading cursive. Does staff happen to know or can help me sort out the names of the uh, two handwritten letters for purposes of my saying who they came from? I just, I couldn't fully figure out who signed these letters. I don't know if staff maybe knew or was able to figure this out. So I had figured that out based on the addresses and okay. the uh, mailing list provided by the applicant, but I didn't record it down. So um, I would have to do a quick so it looks check. Like Mary Swift. Sorry, and Mr. Coleman, is that you? Yes. Okay, thank you for being here, Mr. Coleman. You, could you tell me then who, who you thought these people were? Mary Swift. Mary and Swift. The other one is Ewing, E W I N G, is the last name. The first one you had was Mary. Oh, okay, Swift. And the, the second one then was Ivan, maybe? E W I N G. Any first name? Um, I believe it's John, but I have to double check. Okay, if if uh, someone on staff is able to sort that out for me, that would be a big help, and you can just send. Uh, the, the property is owned by Iva, I V A, but I that so that could be Iva. Okay. Iva Ewing. Okay, thank you. So I think then that. That sorts it, but Ms. Ware, if you, after the hearing today, you know, review your notes and find something else, but, you know, please let David Ortman know and we'll make sure we get the right names. Sure, I'll go ahead and verify those to be sure. Great. And then, um, let's see, just a few other things here. We always ask, but has the comprehensive plan or zoning code been amended in any way since this application was deemed complete, which would have adverse impacts on the proposal? No. Okay. And then I think you laid it out pretty well in your staff report, but normally short plats are not something that I hear, but in this instance, uh, the because the variances are type three permits, the uh, short plot hearing was consolidated before me to hear both. Is that accurate? That is correct, yes. Great, thank you. 
Okay, uh, then at this point, why don't we turn it to uh, Mr. And I'm gonna butcher your name. I think I apologize. I'm gonna try Vernmo, and uh, we'll we'll hear from from him, who is our applicant, Mr. Vernmo, or however it ought to be pronounced. I apologize. You can say all the letters. <coughs> it's Cavernmo. Oh, the K is pronounced. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. Uh, so I'm afraid that perhaps my comments are are a little more uh, personal rather than uh, legal, you know, as far as as far as the matters of a hearing. But I think I'll go ahead and read it anyway, um, and you can judge if it's um, the as far as the validity or the uh, or importance of of having these comments. So. Okay. Uh, anyway, my, my wife and I, my uh, Judy, uh, uh, moved to Skagit County about 12 years ago uh, after having lived and raised our family in Snohomish County. Uh, a number of our neighbors expressed approval of our plans, and there were others who raised legitimate concerns, some of which I would like to address by way of the following brief comments. Um, it's easy to paint people like us as faceless investors bent on taking advantage. The truth is that we're ordinary people simply continuing our diligent approach to life and the process of providing for ourselves and our family without burdening others. We intend to continue to manage our rentals on Ball Street to build a duplex on the proposed new lot and to live in one of the duplex units as part of our retirement plan. When we acquired the homes on Ball Street about five years ago, they came with a bad reputation in the neighborhood. In cooperation with city officials, including the police department, we made tenant changes and physical improvements that have resulted in numerous appreciative comments from our neighbors. As to our current endeavor, sometimes the process of development and construction is not pretty, but local ordinances are in place to protect our neighbors and to ensure that our work is done right. The city of Cedar Woolley and our neighbors will benefit from the improvements we envision and the, with the results of our, and with the results of our conscientious management. Although there may be short-term inconvenience experience with construction, it is true that a rising tide lifts all boats. So at the very least, nearby properties will continue to benefit with increased value. We appreciate the approval recommendation from the planning department and uh, look forward with hope to approval by the hearing examiner and will comply with the con conditions presented. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Uh, Kavernmo. And so you just referenced it at the end, but you saw that uh, city staff had recommended a few conditions of approval. And so you have had an opportunity to review those conditions and you uh, feel that you can comply with them. That That's it? correct. Great. And then let's see. Uh, did you have any interest in having the comments you just read to me admitted as an exhibit in the record? Do you think they're pertinent? I, I mean, I, I think they are. And if some, if someone appealed my decision, those comments would, would be in the record. I mean, I'll summarize your testimony, but your okay. words were, are, are going to be more clear than my summary. So Okay, sure. Uh, that'd be fine. Great. So why don't we make your, your we'll call it uh, applicant response to comments. And if you can send that to either John Coleman or Ms. Ware, uh, they'll make sure that my office gets a copy, but we'll make that exhibit N as in Nancy. Great. And then I did not have any further comments or questions specifically for you. So what I think we'll do is we'll try uh, this person that's an attendee listed as William one more time to see if they uh, perhaps have comments and we can sort out the technological issues. So uh, we'll try to unmute the attendee we have as William. Okay, and William, you're unmuted. It looks like, are you there? And did you have any comments you wanted to provide? Well, still, still not working. So this is what I would suggest. 
um, essentially, uh, either William does, does not have comments they want to provide, although I expect it might be uh, more of a technical issue. So what I would suggest then uh, is if the person listed as William uh, did have testimony they were hoping to provide today, rather than provide that testimony to me, please submit written comments uh, to uh, the city. And the way that that can be done, um, is where could you explain how comments can be submitted in lieu of testimony? Yes, so um, they would be sent to myself, Catherine Weir, um, and I, uh, the email is on the website. I could say it here, it's quite long. Um, and uh, once I receive those, I save them to our files and then I forward them to the hearing examiner to be included as, as part of the record. Great, and Ms. Ware, I assume you would forward those comments uh, to Mr. Kavernmo as well, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so that, what I suggest we do is uh, we'll see if anything comes in by the end of the day, but I'm telling uh, William who is, we're not able to uh, participate, please send any, any comments by the end of the day, and if so, we'll make sure they're included in the record uh, and that those will be provided to me. Uh, and then Ms. Ware, if, if comments do come in, please forward them uh, to both my office and to Mr. Guernmo. And Mr. Guernmo, would you like an opportunity to respond uh, if any comments come in, or do you want me to just move forward with the decision uh, once we get the record closed? Oh, I'd like to see the comments. I assumed as much. So why don't we do this? I'll leave the record open just till the end of the day tomorrow, and that way, if any comments come in, you'll have an opportunity to look. And if you feel the need, I'll let you submit a response to Ms. Ware and she'll provide that to me. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. So then the record will officially close tomorrow. Uh, and then I will produce a decision within 10 working days of the record closing, uh, taking everything that I've seen under review. So uh, Ms. Ware, any final thoughts or, or further uh Comments on behalf of the city? Yes. Uh, I don't know if you would also like this in writing, but I did confirm the full names of the cursive letters. Oh, good. Um, it's Mary Jan Vandergrift, or Vand Vandergrift, V A N D E G R I F T, and then Iva Ewing, I V A A. Oh, I, okay. I so I don't butcher it or mess it up. Could you send the those names just in an email uh, to to David Ortman, and we'll make sure I get the spelling right. <laughs> sure thing, no problem. Thank you. And then I do see another William as an attendee. Maybe this is the same William, and we've sorted the audio in a different way. So why don't we try this again? Hi, is there a William there? Yes. Can you hear me? Hey, we sorted it. Yeah, thank you for being here. And if you could just <laughs> tell us who you are, that would be a help. Okay, great. My name is uh, William Baker. I'm the nephew of Iva Ewing. Okay. And um, we kind of kind of chasing our tail a little bit. We got all the uh, documents from the email uh, from the city. And uh, we were going over some of these. And, and, and I've got some corrections uh, um, and, and questions actually as well. Um, one of them is uh, the Mr. Berg had put in a comment letter um, uh, stating that for his approval for the operation to go through. And uh, Mr. Berg is no longer at that residence. Um, I, I kind of feel like his comments should be withdrawn. He has moved out of the area Okay, so your point was that Exhibit I was a letter from a Mr. Aaron Berg, address of 530 Ball Street, and your concern is that Mr. Berg does not live at that address anymore? Yeah, he, he sold that house. He's no longer a resident there, and I don't believe that his comments uh, uh, on that letter for approval should be considered. Um, uh, there's uh, a few other things as well as there's a SORN, uh, uh, exhibit L and 
it was uh he's my uncle as well um but he had called up and revised his uh statement um and talked to the to the city about it um so I, i'm not quite sure if you guys got that under notification or not did you do you see an updated version of that so I, I did talk to Bill Thorne on the phone, um, and I asked him to please submit some written comments if he'd like to be included as part of the record, um, and gave him the timeline. This was last week, and I looked in the mail today. I was hoping it'd be a letter from him, but I didn't get one yet. Okay. So, um, oh. uh, I was going to ask really quick if, if I receive his letter, because I believe he was going to write in, if the record is staying open until the end of the day tomorrow, that can be included as well. Okay. Okay. And hold on. Babe. Let's do one first at a time. That was Catherine Ware uh, that just spoke. Uh, this is the hearing examiner, uh, Andrew Reeves. So I'm thinking, based on uh, the comments I'm receiving now from Mr. Baker, let me think about how best to leave the record open. We were leaving the record open to get Mr. Baker's. Uh, uh, testimony, but we're getting that now. So why don't we hear everything Mr. Baker uh, would like to say, and then I'll, I'll figure out the best way to move forward. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. No problem. I thank you all for your patience. I had a little uh, technical difficulties, and I'm, I'm going off a laptop and a cell phone and everything else I can pull up. But uh, uh, <laughs> um, also there is a, can you tell me uh, one specific question of, uh, can you tell me if you received a letter, uh, an exhibit from a Mr. Glenn Taylor? He resides at 627 Ball Street. It doesn't ring a bell for me. Um, is where Glenn Taylor? I don't believe so. We do okay, not I've got a, I've got an email that. Uh, he said he sent it in um, to to uh, um, Miss Weir, but uh, and it states on the date of uh, May 18th um, that it was sent to her. Um, I've got a, they they forwarded me the email as well. Um, if I may, I'd like to read that so I can kind of. Um, let you know what the email said. I don't know where it went. It should have been in the exhibit, but I do not see it. Okay, so you have an email. I would suggest, and first off, Mr. Uh, Baker, who is this from one more time? His name is Glenn Taylor, and he's the owner of 627 Ball Street. Okay. And uh, uh, he owns that house, which is uh, just south of Iva Ewing's house, the house right next door to it. Okay, so you can read this, but I would also suggest then we can make this an exhibit and we'll make it exhibit O, and this will be an oh. email, email from Glenn Taylor, and I'll make yes. sure that you have Catherine Ware's contact information so that we can make sure that this is included in the record. But go ahead if you'd like, is it a short email? <laughs> Yes, uh, and I could forward it on to her when we get done, if if that's what's needed. Yeah. Um, and it and and it says, uh, I have just received the information regarding the above mentioning zoning variance and the subdivided application. We are currently traveling, and our mail comes slowly with the virus shutdown. I do not approve, and do not want these to be approved by the city of Cedar Woolley because, and this is number one, the houses on the property are too close already. That, that was one concern. The next concern is the current dwelling are rentals, so Iverson Holding will likely install more rentals, and I believe all the other homes on the street are owner-occupied. Number three, as one of the owners, I do not want more rentals in the area. Number four, how would the fire department get back there to put out a fire? Number five, if Iverson gets the variance, then 
he will likely go forward with a request for a, a lot in the north to be divided also, further congesting the area. Number six, you may not know, but in the past, these rentals were occupied by what he states, uh, drug dealers that may be in the neighborhood, uh, worked for years to get them expelled. More rentals will depress the value of the property and the neighborhood. Number seven, if Iverson wants more rentals, he should look to his own neighborhood in Burlington. The two homes to the west and the southwest of his property at 754 Humphrey Place have room to build rentals. If his neighborhood or if his neighbors would allow him to, he could build there. It's not nice uh, to go to other people's neighborhoods and damage it when you live in a nice big house in another city. Number eight. Is there going to be a I lot more been, personal attack? No, this the applicant. That's the last. Yeah, that's the last one. I'm on the last one. Okay, because I really don't need to take our time for personal attacks. That's not beneficial. Uh, I'm just reading you from what he he sent. I'm I'm not at living anything. I got it all. I, I, I get it. I'm just trying to move us along. Sure, sure. I understand. Uh, number eight. I have been informed by the neighbors that John. Uh, well, again, that would be an opinion. So I'm going to uh, take that out. Uh, but that's his comment. Um, also, uh, Iva Ewing would like to uh, um, basically point out that she does not uh, uh, approve of this. Um, if, if he puts in a driveway to this, to this dwelling, it's five feet from the bedroom window. So anytime all that traffic going in and out of that driveway will be going right by their window from morning, noon, and night. And that is not fair for her. Plus, it, it, it will also bring down the value of her house. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Would you like to read that? Hang on just a second. Iva's got some questions. Okay, so now Iva Ewing is here as well. Is that right? Yes, yes, she's here with me. Okay, and and William, I assumed you were under oath earlier because you at least yes. heard. But Iva, do you recognize <laughs> that you're under oath? Did you have that opportunity? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I, I did swear. And, and is Iva under oath as well at this point? Yes. Okay, She's great. Four as well. Great, thank you. So, Ms. Ewan, thank you for being here. This is your opportunity to provide comments. Okay, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes, I'm Iva Ewing at 531 Wall Street. And yes, I am definitely against this total. I think if John was a, an outstanding citizen that, I, it, he, that he thinks he is, he would have approached me earlier and said and talked to me personally but he didn't and uh, I am totally against it like my bedroom noise and the traffic in and out it's going to be like you say lowering the value of my house and everything and all and all that and he didn't take that into consideration whatsoever and I don't think that uh, it should be allowed and so I just uh, and and far as uh, one of your other ladies is going to talk, I guess Mary Van Griff. She wrote a very lovely lady and told all about the, uh, the the facts on it, and I agree wholeheartedly with it. So, and I'm I'm very very against it. So, that's my thought. Great, thank, thank you, you. Miss Ewan. Did you say there's another person there? Is this in a? Are you guys in an auditorium? There, uh, uh, no, actually, we set up in her house, and uh, but Mary is one of the comments that happened to be on uh, exhibit G, okay. And uh, and uh, yes, and she was just referring back to exhibit G as a reference, 
uh, saying that she backs the, those statements. Okay, but Mary Vandegrift is not there in the room, is that? No, no, Mary is not with us. I, I misunderstood, okay, um, great. So I, I understand Ms. Ewing's comments. Mr. Baker, did you have additional comments you wanted to make? No, no, uh, that, that was pretty much it. Uh, the, the, the biggest part was the fact that if the driveway goes through, uh, like I said, it's within five feet of her bedroom window. And uh, the traffic would just, I mean, it would keep her up all the time. So uh, we wanted to express our, our not approval of it. Right. And, and I'm an older lady. Yeah, because she's definitely an older lady. She, she's 84 years old, so. 84 years young. Come on, Mr. Baker. You got to learn how to, you got to learn that's how right, to that's right. things better. Okay. I'm going to get paid for. <laughs> there you go. I, I understand the comments. I just want to make sure that our record is clear. So um, you had referenced um, the fact that, let's see, there was a potentially a revised statement from a Bill Soren. Correct. Yeah. Are you certain that actually exists or you just think he didn't fully agree with his letter? No, what he, it, what he did once I pulled up the document online, uh, I had notified him that is about his comments. And what he was concerned with was that it, when he wrote that letter, the potential driveway for that dwelling was supposed to go to a different location, a different routing. And that's when he, when he filled out that paperwork. And so when he found out that it wasn't, it wasn't going to go that way, uh, he had called up the city and talked to Catherine uh, himself. Um, but he's in Snohomish right now, and uh, uh, his wife's sister um, just had a stroke. So, uh, but he made sure that he told Catherine uh, about it. Okay. So we, we don't think there's a different letter. It's just he had some thoughts based on the fact that driving yes, that's your view he, he wa yeah he wanted to pull his approval is what he asked for for Catherine and, and uh so um to my knowledge he was supposed to send a letter now I don't know if that letter exists I don't know if it's in an email or or whatnot but I know that's what he re he was going to do okay so that I understand and then you said that you read an email from Glenn Taylor, which you're going to provide to Ms. Ware when we're done, correct? Yes, yes, when we're done, I will. Okay. I think then, uh, Mr. Baker, thank you for coordinating on behalf of uh, the neighbors, some of the neighbors. Um, I think that's everything I would need from you uh, at this point. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn to Catherine Ware, and then I'll, I'll go back to... Uh, our applicant, Mr. Cavernmo, at the end to see if he has any comments he ultimately wants to respond to. So I, I don't need the record to stay open for uh, Mr. Baker to submit written comments because he was just able to testify. And uh, he's there uh, with Ms. Ewing, who also testified and submitted written comments. So the record is only being left open currently uh, to allow uh, the all the documents we've discussed to come into the record. So Ms. Ware, I'm gonna to turn to you here for a minute. Hi, thanks. Um, so I did find the email from Glenn Taylor. It was received on May 18th, 2020. Um, it was the comment period closed on April 20th, um, 2020. Uh, most of the other comments were received closer to that time frame and so as a judgment call I chose to include them in the record. Um, but that one was received nearly a month after so it, it didn't get included. Um, but I have the email so there's no need to forward it. If it's part of the record now I can save it and no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Can we maybe just mute everyone <laughs> other than you as where? Sure. Okay great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and that is all I have for comments and response at this time. Sure. And then the, Mr. Let's see. And I, I don't know if it's, I doubt it's my computer, but clearly we're getting feedback problems here. Um, the Mr. Baker referenced 
a comment from or Mr. Soren calling you. I mean, did what is your recollection of your conversation with Mr. Soren? Was that directed to me? Yeah, sorry, that's for you, Ms. Ware. Yes, sorry. Um, we spoke on the phone and he um, said what William just reiterated that um, he had, was under a different impression at the time that he submitted that letter. Um, and we talked for a while and I did say, yes, please submit a new written statement and I can include that in the record. Um, and I have not received that. Okay, so he, he your recollection is it's, it was similar to what Mr. Baker said, which was that Mr. Soren uh, had a different impression of maybe where the driveway was or what the layout of the property would be. You asked him to submit additional comments, uh, but he never, never did. Is that an accurate summary? That's correct. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you then. I think that's good for my questions of you, Ms. Ware. At this point, I wanna turn back to our applicant, Mr. Cabernmo, and give him an opportunity if he'd like to respond uh, to any of the comments that we've heard. So Mr. Cabernmo, let's make sure you're unmuted. And now's your opportunity, sir. Yeah, you know, some of, this, some of the comments um, I had was unaware of. I can address the one uh, that I understand from Bill Soren. I don't know where that information would have come from as far as the location of the easement driveway. Uh, that has never changed in our in our minds, and I don't know why it changed in his. But so I, I don't I don't understand the validity or the or the foundation for that and, particular comment. And just to understand, because you know I don't know the property like everyone else does, but there's two existing homes already, correct? That's correct. So the only place, it, unless you put a driveway in between 523 and 527, it'd have to go on one side or the other to get access back or access would have to come from, uh, well, it doesn't look like there's even another access road anywhere nearby, but. No, there is not. Okay, so thank you for clarifying, but please proceed. Um, yeah, as far as, uh, I've forgotten his name now, the fellow down the street next to Iva Ewing, um, I guess I'd like to see his email before I try to respond to that. It, a lot of it was um, kind of personal, I guess, in a way, yeah. so I'm, I don't really, really want to respond to those, his comments at this time. Okay, and I so, can, if you'd like, I'm fine with giving you an opportunity to review the email and then provide a written response. That's sure, okay, fine. I appreciate that. And and then did you have any other thoughts or comments you wanted to provide it in response to uh, Mr. Baker or Ms. Ewing's uh, testimony today? No, not right now. Okay, so then I think uh, I will take all of this under consideration and, and to be clear on what else is coming into the record currently, uh, Mr. Guvernmo read some comments at the outset of the hearing I said would become Exhibit N as in Nancy. Uh, there was an email from Glenn Taylor that, that was past the written comment period, uh, which ended back in April related to the notice of application. Uh, but obviously things are you know, uh, difficult at the moment. And uh, so we, we are gonna allow that as a comment sort of in lieu of testimony for the hearing today. We're gonna make that exhibit O. And then I'm going to leave the record open uh, for Mr. Uh, Guermo. Why don't we just say to Wednesday, uh, exhibit P, Mr. Cavermo, if you have written comments you want to provide in response to the testimony and the other exhibits that are uh, being let into the record, you can submit those uh, by this Wednesday, uh, which is October 7th, let's say four o'clock. Uh, and I will take those into consideration along with all of the comments that have been included, all of the testimony I've heard. And the record will then close October 7, 2020, and I'll produce a decision 
on this matter within 10 working days of the record closing. Does that make sense, Mr. Guillermo? Yes, that makes sense. Great, thank you for being here and participating. Ms. Ware, anything else on behalf of the city? Nope. Okay, great. I think then that will conclude uh, this matter. And uh, if, if folks want to get this decision, uh, what's the easiest way they can do that once I've produced it, Ms. Ware? I, I tend to mail them to parties of record if I don't have an email address. So Dick, if I have their address, I send a paper copy. And if I have their email address, I send them a digital copy. Do you have William Baker's <laughs> email address, Catherine? <laughs> um, let me check. I, I, believe I have all the other comment, commenters' um, addresses or email addresses. And I have Glenn Taylor's. Um, I feel like Mr. Baker did an excellent job of coordinating on behalf of folks that I assume are probably not as technologically savvy as he is. So I think if you have can talk to uh, Mr. Baker and have his email, I'm sure he can help make sure. I do have his email, yes. Wonderful. Yeah, he recently requested some information. So. Okay. So I think uh, when my decision is produced, uh, everyone will, will be able to receive that. And uh, if folks are uh, unhappy with the results one way or the other, uh, then my decision is appealable to the Superior Court. So uh, thank you folks uh, for, I know it's a challenging way to do uh, these hearings, but thank you for your patience. I think we got through it uh, and I wish everyone good health. Like I said, the record will close. Uh, it's only being left open for very specific reasons, uh, namely for uh, the applicant to res provide written responses uh, to, to the testimony and, and uh, additional comments that came in today. Uh, the record will close October 7th, 2020 at 4 p.m. and I will produce a decision within 10 working days of the record closing. So with that, we'll go ahead and end today's hearing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.